Here's part seven of Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. So Daisy and Brandy leave the Rhea sisters and they go into the car. Manus is still in the trunk and they drive away. They drive and drive and drive because the cops had just arrived at the hotel because the staff is like, there's a crazy lady with a gun and they're like, yeet. So they park a couple hours away on this hilltop and Brandy's like, we got to get that boy out of the trunk. So it was dark outside. And when they parked the vehicle, a bunch of silver, like silver plated utensils and candle holders and plates and platters come rolling out from under the seats. And they're just like, is this you? Oh, is that you? Not mine. So they get out of the vehicle and they open the trunk and their manis is just fetal position, passed out. Oh my god, Daisy, he's so pathetic. Brandy tries to wake him up. Manus has been, like, without a whole lot of oxygen for a while, so he just, like... Eh? Brandy sits him up on the edge of the vehicle, and he, like, kind of, like, comes to, ends up peeing himself. Oh, t he's done it. He's done pissed himself. You're so sad, you little boy. Mmm. Manus kind of wakes up and looks at Brandy. Mommy? Oh, Daisy, he's lost it. Oh, you poor little boy. You've been so good for us. Mm. And in the trunk with Manus is all this other silver stuff. Teapots, cups, utensils, all that other stuff that was already in the, 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 the cab. And Manus just, like, looks at both of them. You know I'm high right now, so it's okay if I tell you this. Your parents are like God. They created you, but you only call when you need something. Yeah. You see, my parents live in a community for 60-year-olds and over. So by their law, my parents are youngsters. They're fresh out of the womb, you know? And I am not even born yet. But when I went over at Christmas and I was visiting them, all these old ladies, you know, they were scoping me out. Perverts. It was weird. And then it was Christmas, you know, and they give me this big box that looked like a flat screen TV. And I thought it was going to be a flat screen TV. I wanted a flat screen TV. But instead, it was all this shit. Family heirlooms that nobody wanted. I don't need any of this stuff. What am I going to do with it? It's silver. Picks up a teapot. When am I going to use this? It's just fucking stupid. And Manus hops out of the trunk. And he starts grabbing all this silver heirlooms. And he starts chucking it. Just absolutely yeeting it off the cliff. Pointless. Stupid. I don't need it. It's a waste of my time. And then the second gift that my parents gave me is this. Pulls up a box. Box of my old baby stuff because they didn't have any room to keep it. Which means they didn't fucking want it. Why do they think I want any of this stuff? Pulls out baptism candles. Stupid. Box of baby teeth. Fuck the tooth fairy. And fuck you. Loses his shit and just throws shit off the cliff. And then he sits down and starts crying. And he like holds himself in a fetal position and just rocks back and forth. Brandy kneels down next to him and she's like, oh, you poor baby. If you could be anybody else right now, who could you be? He just rocks back and forth. Rocking back and forth. Then your Denver Omelette. This Denver Omelette is Daisy St. Patience. And this... This is Brandy Alexander. So the reason why Manus Kelly Seth Thomas, aka Denver Omelette, is traveling with them is because Daisy's like, I'ma frame you, okay? I got blackmail on shit. Uh, if you try to escape, you set Evie's house on fire. You tried to kill me. You shot my face off. And if you leave, I got you. So now he's permanently tied with the little trio. 
the reason why they're traveling is because Brandy is on a tour to try to find his sister to tell her everything that Shane isn't dead, that Brandy is Shane, to where he's been for the last decade, to tell her about the clap and how he got it in the first place, to just spill the beans and see the family. Brandy doesn't know that Daisy is her sister. Daisy's just riding the wave. Now Daisy's on top of it. She writes a letter to Evie and tells her, take out an insurance policy on that house, send it to an unspecified address in Seattle, Washington, and I have Manus Kelly with me, and we will testify against you in court for attempting to kill me doing all that shit. So give me the money, and uh, we'll shut up. So here's a little detail about Manus and his job as a police officer. He was successful at his gig. He was making arrests daily. But as he started getting older, the arrest kind of stagnated to weekly to a monthly basis. And the department's like, we're going to train a younger hotter dude uh, to take your place. So now we're going to put you on bitch work to uh, kind of weed you out and move in the new guy. So his job was literally to strut around Washington Park in a Speedo to hopefully catch people for indecent exposure, prompting other men to whip out their dick, dick at him. And if they do that, boom, he's got them. You're under arrest for indecent exposure as he's strutting around in a skin tight, tiny, tiny speed up. And as he started getting a little older, nobody was really doing that anymore at him. It really started to fuck with Manus's mentality. Like, do they not think I'm hot anymore? He's really struggling. Like, nobody's whipping out the pee pee for me anymore. My job is. Identity crisis. He's going to the gym. He's trying to work out. He's really trying to check out his, his package in the mirror. Babe, do I look fat? Do these Speedos make my butt look too big? If you were a man, would you think I'm pretty? So then he had to move from strutting around Washington Park to go into gay bars to really try to see if he still got it. Manus was described in the book to be a little fruity himself. He seems to like both both or everybody anything with a pulse so as he's going to gay bars he brought daisy with him uh, in the past when they were still dating so she could witness whatever was going on there see babe i still got game watch they're eyeballing me they're eyeballing me they think i'm hot oh oh no they're walking away they're walking away damn it that guy over there way out of my league or under my league Oh, no, he's walking away too. Fuck. So, with him scoring out, um, and really, you know, raking in no numbers at all, he ended up sleeping with Evie to feel something, to really feel the pride, to let him know that I still got, I still got, I can still score. Anybody wants to fuck me. So, he messed around with Evie, and on the side of the relationship, <laughs> Daisy found out that he was also kind of messing around with other dudes, which is fine. But she's like, oh, oh, all right. And Evie was decently smart enough to know what was going on. So Evie was really jealous of Daisy for being way prettier, way more successful, and actually dating Manus. So that's a whole thing. 